Hi, Lou here to talk about the number of players in games and especially specialty card games. And as usual, the slides are very wordy because uh, that's for people who have hearing problems and I expect most people will listen to this rather than watch it. Now, board games are naturally two-player games. Think of the classic board games like chess, go, checkers, nine men's Morris, backgammon, mancala, shogi, even tic-tac-toe. They're all for two players only. And two-player games tend to be quite competitive. Now, an exception here is the classic racing game Pachisi, which is for up to four, but the racing game backgammon is only for two. Card games that use a standard deck are naturally for more than two players. Another way to put this is that card games are inherently more social than board games. Card games with a standard deck tend to be short, especially each individual hand. Board games tend to be longer. Card games then have more downtime. And when you have downtime in a card game, Usually the card game isn't so complicated that you need to think a lot about what's going to happen. Whereas in a board game, or at least the classic board games, you used your downtime to think about what you were going to do next. And think of games like poker. Poker is much more interesting with more than two players. Also, even when there are only two sides, in standard deck card games, the games are often for more than two players as partners, for example, Bridge, Euchre, Canasta. Classically speaking, playing board games is more serious than playing card games. In fact, betting is introduced to make card games more serious. Often then, the card game itself is not important, it's the camaraderie. At my local senior center, people play Canasta, which is four player partners and a six player partner variation with three sides for six to eight hours a day up to three times a week. Now you probably haven't heard of Canasta because it's quite an old game that's gone out of fashion, but it takes about as much attention and thinking as watching TV. Yet they're not interested in trying other games. Perhaps that would interfere with the social aspect, I don't know, or maybe they're just old and set in their ways. Now, I'm 65, but I don't think I'm so set in my ways as that, but who knows? Now, many modern card games use specialty decks, and they're intended for two players, especially the collectible card games such as Magic the Gathering, Yu-Gi-Oh, and so forth. This hasn't prevented people from coming up with casual Magic the Gathering rules for more than two, I've seen lots of people playing six-sided Magic the Gathering, but they're all casual players. The hardcore players, in fact, usually are not there. They're off at game shops in tournaments, whereas the casual people I've seen come to a tabletop game club. One- and two-player games, one player against the computer, are easier to sell because it's easier to find enough opponents to play the game as long as the experience as a whole is social, as in those collectible card games. The social aspect of collectible card games comes in the card trading and the metagame, making it up the decks and so on. So my recommendation is based on the fact that tabletop collectible card games are right out because you need a couple million dollars to support one and most consumers now know you have your hand in their pocket. The Magic the Gathering people are willing to do that because people have been doing it for 20 some years. Shop owners don't want to see the new collectible card games because their customers won't like it. So just say no to collectible card games and that kills much of the two-player market. Now there is living card games which is actually a, a term trademarked by Fantasy Flight Games where you have several decks available for the game, but there's no hint of buy more cards, have better choices, or pay to win, as it's called in computing. 
My recommendation, though, is make non-standard deck card games for 2 to 6, focusing on the high end, 4 to 6. Because that's where there's a big market. Because many people now, who have joined the hobby, want to play socially and not seriously. Card games are inherently social. The tabletop gaming is becoming more social as more people become hobbyists. You can walk into a big tabletop game club and find that virtually all the games being played are card games, not board games. So go with the flow. Thanks for listening.